All right, welcome everybody. In this video, I want to walk through how we can do some arithmetic with matrices and some terminology that's useful working with matrices. So we've discussed how we can do arithmetic with vectors so far, how we can add vectors, how we can multiply a scalar times a vector. We've discussed how we can multiply a matrix times a vector. What we haven't discussed is how we can do some arithmetic with matrices. How can we add two matrices or multiply two matrices. So just to make sure we've got all of our terminology correct, um, we say that a matrix is an M by N matrix, meaning it has M rows and N columns. So we always indicate the rows first and then the number of columns second. And so this matrix A, it has N columns and we would denote the arbitrary Jth column with a uh, bold fonted A, so this is a column vector, and the J indicates which column that is referring to. And so this matrix, since it has n different columns, is going to consist of n different column vectors, each of which has m entries, right, corresponding to the number of rows in the matrix. So we can write out a matrix uh, in terms of its column vectors, which we've been doing so far. So I can write matrix A as column vector 1, column vector 2, all the way up to column vector n. We have n columns, and each of these vectors has m entries, sits in Rm. We'll see that it's also useful in many examples to refer to a specific entry in the matrix. So we denote individual entries, they're, they're not bolded because these are just numbers, they're scalars, and we indicate both the row and the column that that entry sits in. So first we indicate the, the row I, then we indicate the column J. So that might look like a big matrix down here. Now we can write this out in terms of its individual entries. So notice this is A11, row one, column one, row one, column two, row one, column J, all the way up to row one, column N. We have N different columns. And then row two would be A21, A22, and so on. And we stop down at the last row, which is row M, right? Since we have a total of M rows in this matrix. So uh, just keep in mind, big picture, we always give the row index first, then we give the column index. And so when we're referring to matrices, we start with one. So this is the first row, first column, when working with Python, just recall that indexing starts at zero. So in Python, we would say that this entry, A11, we would actually, if our matrix was called A, we would indicate that with zero, zero, meaning it's in index row zero, column index zero. And then this next entry over here would be A, we're still in row index one, and now we're in column index two. So we just subtract one from both the column and the row index when we're working in Python. So let's talk about a couple of matrices, types of matrices that come up frequently in linear algebra. Um, so first, let's consider a matrix, an M by N matrix, whose entries are all equal to zero. That is called a zero matrix. Um, so these can be of any size. So in this case, we have two rows, four columns. So this is a two by four zero matrix. Just all of the entries inside the matrix are equal to zero. So in general, matrices are rectangular arrays of um, values. When we have this special case where the number of rows and the number of columns are equal to each other, we call this a square matrix. And um, in this case, it would be a four by four square matrix. So N matrices are gonna have the same number of rows as they have columns. And when we're working with square matrices, we call the entries that fall along the diagonal. So A11, A22, A33, A44. These are called diagonal entries. And these other entries in the matrix that are not on the diagonal, we call these off diagonal entries. And so a matrix where all of the off diagonal entries are equal to zero, we call this a diagonal matrix. So over here down below is an example of a diagonal matrix 
all of the off diagonal entries are equal to zero and then we have some values along the diagonal and the very special type of diagonal matrix is a square matrix where all of the entries on the diagonal so when the row and the column are equal to each other we're on, a, we're on the diagonal um so when all of these entries are equal to one but all of the off diagonal entries when i is not equal to j are equal to zero this is what's called the identity matrix so for example this would be the four by four identity matrix and we have uh, different matrices depending on how many rows and columns are in the matrix. So we indicate its dimension, rows and columns, with a subscript. In this case, this is 4 by 4, so this is I4. And one other type of matrix which will play uh, an important role as this semester are symmetric matrices. So symmetric matrices are matrices where the... Um, I jth entry is equal to the j ith entry. And what that would look like, for example, is here is a case of a symmetric matrix. And so um, over here we have the A12 entry. And by this definition, that should equal the A21 entry. And this happens for the other cases as well. So we have A13 should equal A31. And A41 should equal, uh, excuse me, this was A14 should equal A41. And so on. So you can see um, we've set up all of these entries to satisfy um, a symmetric matrix. So what's happening is um, the entries on one side of the diagonal are kind of a re reflection of the entries on the other side of the diagonal.